It's time for a little first trimester recap. I want to dive into all the things and questions you guys have been asking me and things that I wasn't able to share because I didn't announce till I was out of my first trimester. So I have a lot of things that I want to talk about, including symptoms and hard things that have happened, scary things that have happened, and just overall how my first trimester went because I know it's so different for every single woman. So I wanna kinda of tell you guys my experience. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a little rapid fire Q&A of all of the different questions that I've compiled that I feel like are the most asked questions that I've gotten so far since announcing the baby. So let's just get started, oh my gosh. The first symptom is already revealing itself and that is that I am so out of breath at all times. I'm always huffing and puffing I feel like, but it's especially bad when I'm like filming videos because you're just talking nonstop. It's just talk, 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 talk. And then I just get really out of breath. So that is the first symptom. My first trimester was rough in a lot of ways, but also I know some women that have had really, really hard first trimesters and entire pregnancies. So I'm definitely not saying I had like one of the hardest first trimesters because I know girls and women that have had it much, much harder, but there were definitely things that I wasn't expecting and things that were really hard. Personally, I didn't start getting morning sickness till about eight weeks. So I found out I was pregnant around five weeks and I was like, oh my gosh, I have no symptoms. This pregnancy is gonna be a breeze. My sister never really had nausea. My mom never really had nausea throughout her pregnancies. So I just thought, wow, I'm a lucky one and I'm not gonna have any nausea. But then the morning sickness came when I was about, I would say like seven weeks it started. And it was really mainly in the mornings when it first started and I would just like not even wanna get out of bed because I would be so nauseous. And I knew if I got out of bed, I would throw up and so that lasted from about seven weeks to kind of getting better at around 12 weeks but now I'm 15 weeks and I'm still getting morning sickness which is very unfortunate and it's definitely not as bad as it was. It was really bad in the beginning but I would also just get nauseous throughout the day if I hadn't eaten anything. So something that really helped me was just like eating snacks throughout the day, never really having an empty stomach really helped the nausea. There are also these little hard candies that I ordered from Amazon. I think they're called pregnancy pops and they're just like little sour candies. I just got them on Amazon and I feel like those really helped. Also um, just staying away from things that I knew triggered the nausea, like stinky trash cans really made me throw up. Anything like gross in the sink, like anything gross to look at, especially food wise was the thing that made me feel real sick. I also tried those ginger chews and I feel like those kind of helped, but I feel like more like sour type things helped more with my nausea personally. But that's kind of where I've been at with the morning sickness and I was reading online and it was saying sometimes it lasts till you're like 18 weeks. So maybe once just a few more weeks go by, the nausea will be gone, hopefully. I've also had a lot of weird symptoms that I was not expecting. Like I was expecting my boobs to hurt and my boobs to get bigger, which they definitely have and they're still hurting. And you know how everyone talks about the pregnancy glow. You just look so glowy and beautiful. Your skin is perfect. I have experienced pretty much the exact opposite of that. My skin has truly never been this bad in my whole life. I get like two new zits every single day. My back also has little bumps all over it. My chest, never before in my life have I had any of that stuff. So I think that that is a weird pregnancy symptom that I was not expecting because I just expected your skin to be perfect when you're pregnant and that has definitely not been the case. And then I think the number one symptom that like messed with my head the most was the fatigue and just like the extreme 
tiredness that I felt throughout my first trimester. I don't even think I realized how tired I was until I was like 13 weeks out of my first trimester. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have so much energy. And it made me realize how little energy I had throughout my first trimester. And along with the tiredness, I also felt just like a complete and total lack of motivation. Like truly all I wanted to do all day was lay in bed or lay on the couch. And to even think about like putting on makeup or getting ready to film a video, like it just sounded so difficult to me and just I had no motivation at all to do it. And that is a very weird thing for me to experience because I'm, you know, kind of like a task oriented person. I like getting my work done. I like filming videos and being active on social media. And I don't know if it had to do with the fact that I also hadn't announced that I was pregnant yet to you guys or what. But I just had no motivation in any area of life and that was very sad. But I've talked to a lot of my friends who've also had babies or are pregnant now and they were saying they felt the exact same way, especially throughout the first trimester. Just like, just felt like a total blob. And that's exactly what I felt like. I felt like a total blob. And I think those were my number one symptoms throughout my first trimester. I'm sure there's a few little ones that I'm forgetting but let's move on to something that happened in my first trimester that was very scary that I think probably a lot of you maybe have dealt with and that is spotting. But I was about 10 weeks and I was getting out of the shower, drying off, drying my body and I looked down and there was like pr a pretty large thing of blood on my towel and I kept wiping and kept wiping and it just kept coming and I was panicking. I walked in the room and showed Marcus and he just like went white in the face. And I know they say spotting is very, very normal. Well, they say it's common but not normal, but it was the scariest moment ever. He rushed me to the hospital. Um, I had blood work done. I had an ultrasound, but we were waiting and waiting and like, in that time of waiting, like all I could do was just pray that the baby was okay, that we weren't losing the baby because it was just, it's like a feeling of fear that I've never felt before. And it's just like, I would do anything to save this baby or like if there's anything happening wrong, like it just felt so out of my control and me and Marcus were just like so 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 scared They took me back to the ultrasound Marcus couldn't come at this point I had only had one ultrasound and it was when I was like seven weeks pregnant So the baby was like a tiny little peanut But they did an ultrasound to see if the baby was okay if there was a heartbeat And those few seconds of like waiting to see the baby and waiting to see the heartbeat were like excruciating but then we saw the baby for the first time, like the real true baby that looks like a little baby. Like I got to see it, its face, its little body, its hands, it was moving all around. Its heartbeat was perfect. And it was the most relieved I've ever felt. And just me and Marcus were talking about it. And it's like in that moment, you realize how much love you already have for this baby that you've never even met and just like you would die for this baby that you never even met before. And it just made us even that much more thankful for this pregnancy and for this baby. And um, we were just so relieved. Another thing I didn't expect is that I thought that when you're pregnant, you have so many doctor's appointments, but really I've only had three total doctor's appointments and only one ultrasound that was like, a regular ultrasound that you normally do. And then my next ultrasound isn't even until 20 weeks. I don't know why I thought you got like ultrasounds like every other week or something, but that is definitely something that I was like, whoa, I thought that when you're pregnant you have so many doctor's appointments, but you really don't. Or at least not in California or the doctor that I'm going to. But overall, I would say my first trimester was definitely bearable and I am so thankful to be out of my first trimester. 
we were definitely waiting to be out of the first trimester to announce to uh, everybody that we were pregnant just in case something happened. I've had friends that I have announced like super early just because they're like, I know if something even happened, I would still share it with my audience. And even though I felt like that was true for me as well, like if I did have a miscarriage, I would share that with you guys eventually. I didn't like the thought that if something happened and I had already announced there would be like that pressure to have to share it like pretty soon because otherwise people will be asking like how's the baby, how's the pregnancy all the time. So I'm really thankful that I waited and I'm thankful that we had like those 14 weeks of just like just our friends and family knowing but now that everybody knows it feels really really special. So let's move on to the rapid fire q and I'm going to try to answer these questions quick, concise and accurately. <laughs> the first question that I've been getting so much was, were we trying? We were not trying. This was a total happy surprise. And I, I've said this before, but I feel so grateful. I totally know the blessing of uh, having a baby, like how special and what a miracle it is. And we are so, so thankful, but no, we were not trying. Lots of people asked how far apart me and Lexi are, my sister-in-law. We are pretty much exactly one month apart. So we're really, 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 really close. Have I had any cravings? Oh my gosh, I've had the weirdest cravings. First craving, I know, super stereotypical, but pickles. Really, I feel like I started craving salty things like before I even knew that I was pregnant, so super early on. But I've been craving pickles, I've been craving anchovies. For a few weeks, I was craving olives with anchovies stuffed in them. And when I was home in Florida for Christmas, my dad actually made me olives with anchovies in them and it was like the best thing ever. I've been craving pork rinds, chips, Mexican food, just like think of the saltiest salt, salt, salt ever you could think of and that's what I'm craving. I've honestly been kind of like eh about sweets, which is, you guys know, so weird for me. But usually every night I crave a dessert before I was pregnant and now I just like don't really crave a dessert. I mostly just crave like pickles and just like anything salty that I can get. Spicy ramen like anything spicy, sour, or um, salty is all that I want. I kind of want to do a video where I put out all of my cravings for my pregnancy and eat them all on camera. That sounds like my dream video, so let me know if you guys would want to see that. Do you guys know the gender yet is another question we got a lot. We do not know the gender yet. There was a little bit of a miscommunication or a misunderstanding, I think, between us and our doctor, but she was offering us genetic testing and I think along with that was the blood test you can take to see what gender that you're having. I think you can get that at like 10 weeks. And we declined genetic testing, but I think that with that was the gender testing. So I think we're gonna find out at the 20 week anatomy scan. Marcus really wants to keep it a secret till the end, but I'm like, I just gotta know gotta know what this baby is but I don't know maybe we won't but I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out what the gender is and I'll let you guys know do I hope for a boy or a girl I really don't have a specific preference I think all my life I've been like oh I want a girl I want a girl but honestly when I really think about it there's something so special about having a little boy and there's something so special about having a little girl. I feel like there's not one that's more special than the other or one that I want more than the other. But um, yeah, I'm just so excited to find out either way if it's a girl or a boy, I'm so excited. Another question I got was, do we feel scared or unprepared at all since we weren't trying and got pregnant? And I think I felt not scared at first when I first found out, but I just felt this sense of like, oh no, this was a different headspace than I imagined being in before getting pregnant. I thought I would have time to like mentally prepare, like read some books, like get very mentally prepped for having a baby. And I feel like since it was such a surprise, I didn't have that mental preparation time. 
but I don't feel scared. I feel very prepared. I know Marcus is going to be an amazing dad. I think I'm going to be an amazing mom and we're going to love this baby so, so, so much. And, um, you know, I never really feel like you're completely 100% prepared to enter into parenthood for the first time, but we're not scared. We're excited, but we also want to learn a lot before we have a baby as well. And the last question is, when is the due date? I've had a few different due dates told to me, but when I got measured at the ultrasound for um, when we were in the hospital at not our regular doctor, the baby measured at being due July 19th, but I've also been measured due July 23rd. So somewhere in between there, I think, but very, very close to my birthday, which is July 30th. So maybe I'll have my baby on my birthday and we'll be birthday twins, who really knows? But yeah, little July baby or August baby could always go late as well. And then the last thing that I wanna answer is a question that I didn't get asked necessarily, but I wanna do these pregnancy trimester recaps after each trimester. And I wanna answer this question each time, which is, is there any advice I would give to someone that is in their first trimester? And I would say my biggest advice to you, if you're in your first trimester, would be to just be easy on yourself and rest and don't feel a pressure to be working or be your active normal self during this time. Your body is creating a little human and the first trimester is so important for developing all of its organs and it's just like being created in your first trimester. So just be easy on yourself, rest, drink lots of water and don't be hard on yourself at all. I feel like I wish that I had been a little more easy on myself emotionally just because, I, like I was saying, I just felt so unmotivated and I was like, why am I not motivated? What the heck is going on? But it's so totally normal. So that would be my number one piece of advice to you if you are in your first trimester. But I think that wraps up this video. I love you guys. Again, thank you for all of your love and support. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys very, very soon. Love you so much. Oh, oh, I wanted to show you guys my bump before I leave. Still just a little one. <laughs> okay, bye.